Hey, are you releasing a project or a single this year? Well, I have a list of seven things that you don't want to forget. Welcome to the Christian Musicpreneur Podcast, where we provide tips, tools, techniques, and resources to help you grow your ministry. I'm your host, Simone Henry, a business coach and mentor for independent Christian recording artists. Everybody, I'll keep having to remember this is live. There is no do over. <laughs> okay, um, I forgot the whole the last piece of my um, of my little intro there. But anyway, so today I am um, talking about <laughs> I am talking about um, releasing this year, right? So this year, if you are releasing a project or a single. Um, Normally, you know, you would have a list of things that you were, you want to do and you want to make sure that certain things get done and so that you have a good release. <laughs> hey, Chris. Um, so when you do this, there are there are lots of things and I'm going to call them. Some of them are are my pet peeves. So. I keep talking about them to artists. Um, so we want to make sure that you actually do them that so that, you know, your release just goes better. It goes more smooth. <laughs> um, so let me talk about, I'm going to, let's talk about those seven things, right? And uh, these all, I'm, I'm pulling from my, from my uh, handout that I used to give. And it was a workshop I did a while back called the Album Release Roadmap. And um, one of them, the first one is uh, using dropbox.com or WeTransfer or box.com or something like that in order to transfer and send people files uh, and different things like that, right? So when people are asking for your tracks, they're asking for your WAV files, your MP3s, large photos, things like that. It is best not to attach them to emails, especially when we're talking about press people. And um, I will tell you that later, Chris, especially when we're talking about press people and we're talking about, um, uh, you know, industry people, people who are interested in getting um, your music for their broadcast, stuff like that, you know, they get a lot of submissions. So if they're getting a ton of submissions for music, their email is going to get filled up very quickly. So it's better to, you know, write something in the email that says, hey, here is here are the files that you requested. These are the links. You send them the links. You make them make sure those links are public, that they have access to it, and they can go and click the link and download your your file and your song. And of course, you know, especially if you're sending an MP3, you can tag it. Make sure that those meta tags are there so that if it gets mixed up, because they're getting a ton of these songs and stuff and it, it, the song gets mixed up with a bunch of other stuff and they kind of forget about it, come back later or whatever. Um, your information is in there. So they listen to it. They decide they want to play it on the station or something like that. And they want to use it for broadcast or whatever um, that you're getting credit for that It's in there. Um, OK, smart links. That's number two, so smart links are these fantastic links where you give your audience one link to to stream or download your music and when with that one link your audience can choose whether they're going to download it on their android device on their laptop if if they want to stream it on youtube apple or spotify whichever whichever streaming service or ever, you know, whatever product they're using. Not everybody has an iPhone, not everybody has Androids, you know. Um, so in order to accommodate all these different um, devices and services, you know, there are people overseas, mostly overseas who are using Deezer. They're not really even using Spotify. But if you're only giving people your Spotify link, 
then you're kind of cutting out a lot of your audience. And one thing I like to tell people, when you're, when you're dealing with people, you have an audience. You want them to turn into fans. You want them to be your customers at some point. You want to make things easy for them. So give them a smart link. Let them choose what platform they're going to listen to your music on. And they'll be happy because you made it easy for them. Put together a quick elevator pitch. Number three. A good elevator pitch would describe who you are, what you're about, kind of maybe even what you sound like. Um, it could be 30 seconds or, or shorter because a lot of times what I hear from artists is that, you know, they may be introducing their music or introducing themselves as artists and they just say, you know, or I was born, I was, I was raised, I was, I grew up here, I, you know, that kind of thing. Those things are very common to everybody, right? We were all born. Um, so that's not super unique. So come up with a unique way of describing yourself that will capture people's attention and draw them in. Okay. Uh, let's see. So number four, create or rebrand your website. A lot of times when you are releasing music, what I see a lot of artists do is that they may change the banner on their social media, on their Facebook page. Uh, there's no banners on Instagram. Um, but on their different profiles, you know, but their website is still, still has old information. They haven't updated the bio. They haven't, um, you know, put out a fresh press release, the merch, the colors, everything is just old from either the last project or when you first put your website up to begin with. And that is a shame. Because when you are releasing new music, that's when you're going to be getting the most attention around you and your music. So that's when people are going to be looking for those smart links and looking for your website. That's when people are going to be Googling you the most. And if they come to your website and they see all this old information, one thing I see a lot of times is that artists don't update their calendar. And, you know, now we're in pandemic in the pandemic age where artists don't have a lot of gigs these days. So they're not really doing a whole lot. Um, if you have nothing on your calendar, I would just take that page off the off your, your website because I, I think it's better to not have that page on your website than to have it there. And there's nothing happening. There's nothing coming up. It, it just makes you look like you're not in demand. Like there's nothing, there's nothing going on. So um, keep the website up to date. Put up the new photos, new colors, new merch, you know, stuff like that when you're releasing. Keep that website up to date. Speaking of merch, number five is create new merch. This is one thing that I don't see, especially Christian artists doing. Um, not that they're not creating merch. Um, they don't create like exclusive merch or limited edition stuff. When you're putting out a new project or a new, uh, a new single, you might want to look at merch that is branded, especially if you think your song is going to be, um, is going to be a hit, you know, if people are really gravitating towards it, then it's kind of cool to create some limited edition around that. That also creates kind of a feeding frenzy around that merch. So you maybe create um, a t-shirt with a special design on it with maybe some lyrics from the song and, you know, a special phrase or create a, a kind of a movement or something around it that is only available for a short, a short time, you know, for the amount of time that you are, that you are promoting the single or something, right? And then when that is done, it is done. You can't get it anymore. And what that does to your audience is that 
oh, I have to get it now because it's not going to be available. As opposed to, oh, um, I saw this t-shirt last week. It was here last last time I saw this person, you know, for the concert. Um, I don't have any money today. It'll be here for the next one. You know, it's it's kind of always there, right? Whereas if you have a limited edition, hey, Joshua, if you have a limited edition, you create more of a frenzy, you know? So that is, I think that is something that we as Christian artists, uh, you know how the Bible says to be savvy, be shrewd. Um, I see a lot of secular people doing this kind of thing, but we as Christian artists, we don't do this as much. And I think we need to, we need to start doing that. Okay, let's see. Um, number six, am I on number six? Lyrics. Put your lyrics on lyrics databases. Make it searchable. If you have a merch product that is um, not necessarily a CD, which would have, you know, with a nice jacket that would have the lyrics on it, but um, if you're doing more of a digital product um, or you're doing, um, what do you call it? Those uh, little thumb drives or something for, for your audience. Put a, put a text file in there with the lyrics on it. Put your lyrics on the lyrics databases. Get onto Music's Match and onto, is it, uh, the other one is Harry Fox. And then there's a lot, lots of other free ones out there that will let you just sign up and put your lyrics out there. And in that way, that helps you with your SEO, which is your search engine optimization. Um, Cause then, you know, it's not just your own platforms that are showing up in the search, but it's also, also the lyrics that are showing up. So that, that gives you more, more um, opportunity to come up in the search. But as a Christian artist, your lyrics matter. So I would think, especially if you're a group or a choir or something like that, put your put your lyrics out there. Those lyrics matter. And let's see, this is number seven. <laughs> Create a video for all of your songs. Now, I'm not talking about spending a ton of money in doing a highly produced video where you're in some great location and you're changing clothes 15 times and you're doing several different scenes. Thank you, Joshua, um, for the lyrics links. Um, you're not changing, um, you're not changing uh, clothes and, you know, doing all of that. Um, all for your video, right? You may do that for maybe one or two songs on your project, but that doesn't necessarily mean that um, you can't have a video if you don't have, if you don't do the, the major production, right? Do lyrics videos, do performance videos, do organic videos where you're just hanging out with the band or the group and y'all are singing the song a cappella in a little room or something somewhere. Be creative, sing in the car, do, do some carpool karaoke, do, um, do like the little, um, I love, I used to love the, the, and he probably, I'm sure he still does it. The videos that Jimmy Fallon would do on the tonight show where the roots, would all get together in this tiny little space with kids instruments and they'd have the guest artists come in there and they're playing the instruments for them and they're singing along and playing along. That's a really cool concept, you know? So, um, <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the video review shows are really for, um, the, the highly produced videos. But all of your videos don't need to be like that, do they? So those are, that one was uh, number seven. Um, let me know if this is helpful to you, comment on this video. One other tip I want to leave with you before I go, today is going to be a short one, um, is 
there is a great tool called LastPass. And I have seen, you know, going back to, going back to your website and keeping it updated, stuff like that. When, when somebody else is maintaining your website, when somebody else is maintaining your, just anything for you, anything that needs a login, make sure that you as an artist, if you own your website or you own whatever online platform it is you're using, but somebody else is managing it for you, make sure that you actually have that login information. What I do is I use LastPass and what I set up for artists for when I am helping them to manage something, right? Because what I do with my artists is I set up I set up their email marketing platform for them. Well, they, I have them sign up for it. They put in their credit card information and they pay for it, but they share the login information with me through LastPass. And then I can go in and I can do other setup and other, other different things like that for them. But they maintain ownership. I was talking to an artist the other day and you know, they hired somebody to, to build their website for them. And, but that person, they built the website and, but whenever they went to make any updates, the artist was paying a lot, paying through the nose to get these updates done. And so, you know, and I was talking with them and saying, oh, well, you know, um, first of all, your website is on WordPress. Um, there's no need to pay this much money to keep it maintained. Um, and so that person, and I told them, you know, get LastPass, get your login information back from, from that person and make sure that you are maintaining it. You own this website. That artist told me that, oh, okay, well then I'll go and I will, I will buy out this person by the website. Basically, basically they're buying the website back. And I'm thinking, but you own that website. You have already purchased it. The domain is yours, the host, maybe not the hosting, but, um, but that website is yours, you own it. So what is there to buy back? Make sure that you are keeping your login information where you have access to it. And you, so that if you decide you don't wanna work with this person anymore, you can revoke their access and you are keeping control of your stuff, what you own, what you have. Okay. Any questions for me? Hey, Josh, Josh has some really, um, really great comments. Thank you for watching. Um, any other, <laughs> let me know your, your takeaways from this episode any other things that you think that artists need to know that they that uh, they forget when they are releasing music those are my main ones i have in my in my release roadmap i've got like a list of 29 things you know like people don't um people don't create like a uh, a business around their music ministry, which I think is crucial because when it comes to investing in yourself and in your ministry, everything that you spend on that ministry or just about everything should be tax deductible. You know, I set up a legal entity and create a separate bank account and everything for my business comes out of that bank account. And it doesn't necessarily touch my personal stuff until I am paying myself from, from that business. Okay. So that is it for today. Today is a short day. One of, before I let you go, <laughs> one thing I want to um, say is that I am doing a, I am doing a three video 
masterclass series that um, I, pro I posted the first video on my page, but the other two videos will be on my website. So if you want to see the other two, let me know. Um, send me, in, send me uh, an IM and I will send you the link to the whole series so that you can go and watch them and, um, and you can get some of this great information to you, um, to you directly. The, the information is very juicy. Oh, let me tell you what it's about. It's about the fan journey. How do you, how do you turn a listener into a raving fan? That is what the fan journey is about. There is a process for doing that, right? You don't want to, what I see a lot of artists do is that they will, um, they will release music and then, you know, they'll not only go to the people that who are already in their audience, people who already know them and ask them to buy or stream or, you know, mostly buy their, their CD or their album or come to their concert, things like that. But they'll also try to do that same thing with people who don't know them. And that is not necessarily the, the best way to build a relationship with new people. If somebody doesn't already know you, they really have no incentive to put on a raincoat, get a babysitter and go out, find parking to come to your show, right? There is no incentive for them to pull out their wallet and buy your music. So you want to do it in a way where you are introducing yourself first. You're educating them on who you are and what you're about. You're getting to know them. They're getting to know you. And then you ask them to buy what it is you're selling. Then you're asking them to come to a show. Right? So um, absolutely. Absolutely. So you have a, Chris says he has a new release coming out and you haven't done half of these things. Okay. Well, Chris, then definitely this is for you for, and you know, one of the things that I have found is that, you know, artists, they don't, um, they don't keep these things in their heads. I have spoken to artists who have been releasing music for 10 or 20 years and, you know, and they don't know all of these things. And another reason is because the world is changing, right? The way things were done years ago aren't necessarily done today. So we have to update and we have to revamp and pivot and change how we're doing things. So absolutely. If you are a brand new artist, then there is nothing really for you to unlearn here. You, you're starting off fresh and you're releasing music on, you know, on doing it right the first time, right? But if you've been doing this for a long time, then there are some things to learn and unlearn in this in this whole process. Okay, so um, so comment your your biggest takeaways, and also I am me or um, comment, and I will message you the link to. The, that masterclass series. So you can see what this fan journey is all about. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Christian Musicpreneur podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean a lot to me if you would like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Feel free to share your takeaways in the comment section below and join my free Facebook group, Christian Recording Artists Seeking Freedom. See you next time and remember to take action and never give up.